In my previous basics video, I showed you how to roll back system applications such as Google Currents to a previous version. So the next question is, how do you keep them like that? Well, applications are usually defaulted to automatically update when updates are available. So in order to stop that, go to the Google Play application store and on the main home screen, you will see a little arrow pointing down in the top right hand corner of the screen. This will show you all the applications you've currently installed on the tablet and if there are any updates available. If you press on it, the app will give you a few options including update if there is any available and open. Just underneath these options is a tick box that says allow automatic updating. Untick this and it will keep the application in its current version whether or not an update is available. Now this can be done with all applications, not just system applications, but remember that once you update an application downloaded from the Google Play Market, you can't roll it back to previous versions like system applications. If you've been an avid viewer of my basics videos, and I know you all are, you will know that if you long press on an icon to pick it up and then dump it on top of another icon, this creates a folder. You can then drag more icons into the folder to make it bigger and therefore organize your home screens more efficiently. And here is my home screen, and as you can see, it's full of folders with lots of applications. However, the screenshot of a folder always displays the first icons you put in a folder, and these aren't always necessarily the ones you use most often. Take my games folder for example, I don't often play these three games shown here, yet they are displayed as my folder icon because they were first in the folder. I sometimes forget that more popular games are in this folder. So to make different icons appear on the folder icon, pick up these apps within the folder and then drag them to the top left of the folder as illustrated here. Now my home screen shows the folder with the new icons I put at the top of the list. It might be a small visual tweak, but when you've got folder icon OCD like myself, things just have to be perfect. I'm asked this question so often, so I thought I would do a basics video on it. What is that live wallpaper you use on your videos? It looks fantastic. And you are right, it is fantastic, and I love it. And I've been using it for over a year now. This live wallpaper is called Galactic Core, and it's free from the Google Play Market. And unlike many other wallpapers that affect the performance of your home screens, this has no impact. Everything still runs perfectly. So thanks for asking, and enjoy the wallpaper. The Nexus 7's battery life is pretty solid, but we're always looking for ways to make it even better, and this little tip might just increase your battery life, but it does come at a price. By default, your tablet's Wi-Fi is always on, always checking the internet and always consuming power. But you can turn this off when you're not using the tablet. To do this, go to Settings, then choose Wi-Fi, and in the top right of the screen, you'll find a little button with three dots. Press on it, and then you can go to Advanced Wi-Fi. On this screen is an option labeled Keep Wi-Fi On During Sleep. Set this to Never. Now watch when I bring the tablet out of sleep mode. The Wi-Fi icon is blank, but then it kicks in and starts connecting to the internet when you bring it out of sleep mode. It's very quick and it should connect by the time you open an application. The major drawback of this, however, is that you won't get any notifications such as email notifications. They all flood into your tablet when you bring it out of sleep mode. So it's a trade-off. Give it a try and see if you prefer putting your Wi-Fi to sleep or keeping the settings as they are. If you have been following my basic series for a while, you should now know that your tablet is always talking to the internet, and it's always bringing up new notifications, such as this email. This is called auto-syncing, and a lot of apps do it, and it consumes power. So here is how to turn it off. First, go to Settings, and then Data. In the top right-hand corner of the screen are three dots, and this is an Options menu. Press on it, and then choose the Auto Sync option. This is a global setting, and it will stop all of your applications from syncing. So that's no emails, no Facebook updates, and no tweets. You'll have to sync everything manually. To do this, scroll down a settings page to your accounts. Here is my email account, and as you can see, the Auto Sync icon is greyed out. So I have to go into the account, and then press on the email account itself to trigger a manual sync. And in this instance, as you can see, a new email arrives. This is my Google account, and as you can see, there's all sorts of stuff that syncs with the tablet. Again, it's another one of those trade-offs. Keep your tablet bang up to date with all the latest content from the internet, or save a little bit of battery life. Back in the data usage screen, I'm going to turn auto-sync back on. 
And now if I go back to my Google accounts, you can see that the sync is now in progress and all sorts of things are syncing again with the internet. Bluetooth seems to come as standard these days and the Nexus 7 is no different. That makes sharing files between Bluetooth devices a simple task. So I'm going to show you how to transfer something from another device to the Nexus 7. First of all, you need to pair the two devices together. To do this, you need to turn on Bluetooth on both devices. On the Nexus 7, that's done by swiping down from the top right of any home screen and choosing Bluetooth. When you switch on Bluetooth on the Nexus 7, it will search for any visible Bluetooth devices, so make sure your other device is visible. After a few seconds, the Nexus 7 should find the other device, press on it and it will confirm the device you are trying to pair to with a pass key. If they both match, press OK and they will be paired forevermore. Now it's time to transfer some files from one device to the other. In this example, I'm going to send a picture from the mobile phone to the Nexus 7. Most applications, such as the gallery, will include a share or send button. Press on it and choose the Bluetooth option. This will take you to the device's Bluetooth screen. You will now be able to select the device you previously paired to and that should automatically start sending the file to the Nexus 7. Now the Nexus 7 needs to accept the file that's been sent to it. So scroll down from the top of the screen and you should have a notification for file transfer. Press on it and choose accept and the file will start sending from the mobile phone to the Nexus 7. If you swipe down from the top of the screen again, you can watch the progress of the file as it's transferred. Once the transfer is complete, you can press on a notification and that will take you to the Bluetooth file transfer list. Press on it and then choose an application to open a picture and voila, we now have a picture transferred from the mobile phone to the Nexus 7. For later reference, you can see what files have been received via Bluetooth by scrolling from the top right of the home screen, choosing Bluetooth and in the top right hand corner, there is a show files received option. Alternatively, if you have a file browser application, all Bluetooth files are stored in the Bluetooth folder. Of course, Bluetooth has many practical uses beyond file sharing, but this basic video should help get you started. This may come as a surprise to you, but the Nexus 7 doesn't come with a file browsing application. Now, on a tablet you may have no need for one, but it's always useful to have one. There are plenty of free ones available from the Google Play Market, such as this one called ES File Explorer. It will show you all folders and files on a device, and while it's probably best to leave most folders alone, it is useful to know where some files are kept. For example, files transferred via Bluetooth saved to a Bluetooth folder. Files downloaded off web browsers are usually stored to a folder called Download, and camera pictures are stored exactly where you think they would be, the DCIM folder. So my advice is to download a file manager, just so you know you have one if you need one. You never know, you might need it when you have no access to the internet and can't download one. As you browse websites and news applications, the chances are you will end up downloading stuff onto your Nexus 7. Take this quite delectable array of pictures from one of the leading technology YouTube channels on the internet. I want to download one of these pictures and I'm going to do that by long pressing on the picture and choosing the save image option. Now watch the screen as I perform this action. A little down arrow is going to display in the top left hand corner of an Nexus 7 screen. This is a download notification and if you swipe down for your notifications you will see that my downloaded picture is right there. Now this is all very good and convenient but after a few hours or so, the chances are you'll have removed your notifications. So where does the download end up? Well, if you go to your applications drawer, that's the middle button on your dock, you'll find an application called Downloads. Open the application and you'll be shown a list of all the things you've downloaded onto your Nexus 7, starting with the most recent, which is, of course, my picture. If I return to the download list, I can choose all the files to look at. Now, for more advanced users who want even more control over their downloaded files, you can use a file manager, such as ES File Manager, to locate the downloaded files. To make things nice and easy, these files are stored in a folder marked Download.
Copy and paste is one of the greatest things in the world ever. And even though you might not have access to a keyboard, this feature is available on your Nexus 7, although it's not perfect. Let's start with a simple copy and paste scenario. Here is some text I want to copy. The first thing you need to do is long press on the text to bring up a highlighter. Then drag the ends to highlight your text. Now you can use a copy button to copy that text. Bear in mind that each application may work slightly differently when it comes to copying your text. Now go to the point where you want to paste your text and long press again. This will display a paste button. Press it and there is your copied text. You can copy text from one application to another too. In this example, I am selecting text from a news story on the BBC News application. As you can see, the copy button is at the top of the screen, so just be conscious of the fact that there is no uniform way of doing this copy action on Android tablets. So now that I have my copied text, I'm going to switch back to my Google Drive document. Again, if I long press on the document and then use the paste button, it will copy the text into the document. It's fantastic when it works. Here is Amazon Kindle. If I long press on the text here, it does get highlighted, but only to do a dictionary search on the word or for you to highlight the text within the application. Now, this may be down to copyright reasons, but on some applications, you can't even do a long press to highlight text. Take Appy Geek, for example. Nothing at all happens here, so just be aware that copy and paste is a little limited on your Nexus 7. For a long, long, long time, this is what you had when it came to Android devices. One user account. This is my wallpaper, and these are my programs, and these are my widgets, and these are all the wonderful things that make the tablet mine. But what if you share the tablet with someone else? They obviously want their wallpapers, programs and preferences. And now it's easy to do, very easy in fact, by adding a new user. And here is how you do it. Go to settings and then choose the user option. Now you can do several things here, such as updating your user account, setting a new nickname, even adding some notes about your own account. But what we're really interested in here is the new user button. So let's press it and see what happens. When you choose to add a new user, you will be warned that any user can accept updated app permissions. So there is still a shared element to different users. But other than that, each user will have their own environment to play in. If you choose to set up your new user now, you'll be taken back to the lock screen. And this is where you will see two pictures at the bottom of the screen. This is where you can switch from one user to the other. So if I press on my own face here at the bottom, it's going to switch back to my original user account. And as you can see, there's my wallpaper. Press on the new user account and it will switch back to the new wallpaper, which we haven't yet changed. In this example, we'll set up an account with no email just so that we can see what the homepage looks like. And as you can see, it looks just like the Nexus 7 when you first got it. The wallpapers, apps and widgets have defaulted back to their original state. Your new user is ready to start playing with their own environment. Of course, to download applications, the new user will have to have an email account and that does get a little bit complicated and as this is just the basics, I'll leave it there for now. To switch accounts, all you need to do is lock your tablet then press the power button and you're back at the lock screen where you're ready to switch from one user to the other. So let's return to my account. And obviously, if you want to delete a user, you will need to go back to settings and press the delete button. As I've said, there is a lot more to multiple user accounts, so use this as a guide to get you started. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please click that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. And if you're hungry for more videos, subscribe. It's free after all.